Gangnam Style Gangnam Style 낮에는 따사로운 인간적인 여자 커피 한 잔의 여유를 아는 품격 있는 여자 밤이 오면 심장이 뜨거워지는 여자 그런 반전 있는 여자 너는 선호해 낮에는 너만큼 따사로운 그런 선호해 The story of Brutus Aetius is full of vengeance and gore. This is the story of what happened to Brutus Aetius. This all goes back to the hunters of his village stepping onto Macedonian land and killing their most worshipped animal, the lion. As he grew up, the Macedonians were plotting revenge on, on the village. While Brutus was happily enjoying his sixth birthday, playing in the snow, the watchman of his village screamed, Barbarians are coming! His mother, Emiliana, told him, Go find a place to hide! Quickly, Brutus did... As he was told, Brutus watched his fellow villagers get slaughtered. He watched his father try to fight them off, but he was then speared in the heart and fell to the ground. All Brutus saw was red snow and bodies. Soon the barbarians went for his mother. Quickly, Brutus came out of hiding and said to the barbarians, Please spare me and my mother. Lassius, the barbarian leader, said to him, I will only spare you, then sliced his mother's head. Brutus screamed, No! The barbarians took Brutus captive and burnt down his village. The barbarians brought Brutus back to Macedonia, where he was forced to work as a slave. Every day he had to do exhausting work. This made Brutus strong and tall. He was 6'4 and had knotted muscles. His slave friends and his best friend Lucius were plotting a riot towards the Macedonians and their barbarian king, who killed their families. The next day, all the slaves were not willing to work. Then Manlius, an eight-foot-tall, 250-pound giant, picked up one of the guards over his head and screamed, Death to Macedonia! <laughs> then he smashed the guard on the ground. At first, Brutus heard a crunch. Then he opened his eyes and to see a splatter of red on the ground. Then all the slaves attacked, and Lucius and Brutus saw their chance to escape and made a run for it. Lucius and Brutus then began their long journey to Athens. When they reached Athens, Lucius said, I have never seen a city so beautiful. Lucius mentioned that there was a blacksmith across the a city of Athens that his father used to go to. So Brutus asked, How will we buy us no golden coins? So Lucius replied, Well, we should try and see if he remembers my father, and maybe he will help us out. They found the blacksmith's store, which was called the Green Dragon Armory. They entered the store and saw all the weapons and armory they needed to fight the Macedonian barbarians. Lucius said to the blacksmith, Do you know my father Quintus? The blacksmith continued, No, I've never heard of him. Why? Brutus replied, Because we need armor and weapons to supply our slave army against the Macedonian barbarians. The blacksmith replied, Well, if it has to do with the Macedonians, those th Macedonians robbed me and all of my armor that for themselves. I'll give you everything in the store on one condition. What? said Brutus. You'll let me fight with you and your army, said the blacksmith. Brutus said, Done, but we'll need all the swords and armor you have in the store. Yes. By the way, I'm Tiberius, he answered. Lucius said, we will need to find an inn because we have been walking for five days straight. We will meet in the town square tomorrow. Brutus and Lucius found an inn called the Black Meadow Inn. When they first went inside, they bought two rooms right beside each other. In the hotel, there were two soldiers who looked very beaten up. They were talking about their team and how they were ambushed and slaughtered by Macedonians, but they were very lucky to escape. Lucius asked them, would you like to get revenge on these Macedonians? Yes, they both replied eagerly. Well, you have the chance to, said Brutus. How? They answered very confused. We are plotting revenge against the Macedonians. We have a slave army containing about 400 men, Brutus replied. The two soldiers said, We will fight alongside you with much pride. Then the other soldiers said, Our names are Julius and Vitus. Then they went to sleep and got ready for the long day ahead of them. The next morning, Lucius woke, up, woke Brutus up. The two soldiers were already waiting in the lobby for them. Together they walked to the town square where they would meet Tiberius. When they got there, they found Tiberius standing by two wagons. One contained armor and weaponry and the other was for passengers. They quickly suited up for battle and started their long journey. Halfway through their journey, Tiberius asked, do you think we will be able to defeat the Macedonians? Brutus replied, of course we will, and if we won't, we will strike them in the heart. As they arrived to Macedonia, they saw what was going on. The slaves were still trying to fight the Macedonians with no weapons. Then Brutus shouted to them, 
Come, we must prepare. All the slaves stopped and gathered around them. They moved to a spot where the barbarians could not see them. They prepared all the slaves with armor, swords, and shields. After a couple hours, all the slaves were prepared for war. Then they saw the barbarians in a phalanx. Brutus said to the slaves, We will charge on my command. Then Brutus said, Charge! The roar of the slaves was so loud that it could be heard from miles away. When the slaves and Macedonians clashed, Brutus was slaying the barbarians one by one, looking for Glacius. Then, when he saw him, he sliced off the heads of every barbarian in his way. When he reached Glacius, Brutus said, I've been waiting for this moment since my sixth birthday. Then, Brutus came at Glacius and fought each other until Brutus saw his chance and cut off Glacius' left arm. Glacius screamed, Ah! But still, Glacius was able to fight again. Then Brutus, with all of his might, stabbed him in the chest. Blasius fell to his knees, and Brutus showed no mercy when he chopped his head. When Blasius' head fell to the ground, the Macedonians were retreating. Lucius was still fighting Blasius, the second in command, Thrasius. Then Thrasius saw his chance and ran away. But after he left, Brutus saw an archer on the rocks getting ready to fire. He took the shot and hit Lucius in the lower neck. Once the archer took the shot, he was speared and his body fell down. Then Julius saw a Macedonian cavalry coming at them. Brutus shouted, Prepare for battle! Then Brutus said to himself that he would kill all the Macedonians. After Brutus killed twenty horses, he saw Thrasius coming at him. Brutus ran at him and took a swing, but missed, and Thrasius did not hesitate and sliced it off of Brutus' head. After Brutus' death, the slaves killed all the Macedonians except for Thrasius. The Macedonians were able to kill all the slaves except for Tiberius. Tiberius looked at the Thrasius, and Thrasius looked it back. Tiberius said, I will avenge my fellow soldiers. Finally, they ran at each other, and Thrasius threw his spear, and Tiberius swung his sword. Tiberius' sword cut Thrasius in half, and Thrasius' spear struck Tiberius in the heart. Both sides fought valiant battles, and the gods chose for nobody to win.